Right, skirting Crook's Peak now. I will be out here again in the summer. I should do Compton Bishop and St Andrew's Church. And I'll do the... It'll be hot by then and I'll be doing the lower tracks round. Um, you can hear the motorway. I don't know if it picks it up on the camera. The camera's got to cope with the wind at the moment. Um, I don't know if I'm keeping it more still or not. I can't tell really. Sometimes I swing and sway. I don't mean to. It's uh, not. It's not supposed to be for walking. This camera. It's known as a still camera. Now, I've walked this quite a few times now over the years. This route. Um, yeah, when I was with the army cadets, we used to walk up the steep side of the Crooks Peak, up over the top, all the way along. God, I don't know how I done it now. We walked the whole way to Wells, and we did it in nine hours. We bathed our feet, and then we got taken home. We had transport home. But, oh, I can see a glider. I don't usually see them this far out. If it's not a glider, it might be a model plane. There was a bloke over there with a white hat on, and it could be that's his, he's controlling a glider there where the thermals are. Yeah, so there's the busy motorway. I'm heading for Loxton Village. And uh, I haven't decided which route I'll go when I get to uh, the plantation area. It depends on the time. It all depends on the time. And I don't want to rush it, I want to enjoy it. I haven't even looked at the clock. I haven't even looked at the clock. Um, when we get down here in a minute, it won't be so windy. As soon as I get into the shelter of the shrubs. Yeah, I've timed it because the wind's just right. It's cooling, actually. It's a cooling wind. I think it would be quite hot without it. I, I mean, earlier I had thought of taking my jumper off. And, uh, but no, I've just rolled my sleeves up to try and get my arms brown. Now, uh, it's quite an uneven surface going down. This is the West Mendip Way, by the way, as well. The West Mendip Way's got many branches off it. They still call it the West Mendip Way, though. And the walk I'll be doing through the wood, it's all classed as the West Mendip Way. It's supposed to be an ancient route that Jesus of Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, is supposed to have walked. But nobody really, really knows. But these myths exist. And they could be true. Who knows what happened? Because don't forget, the Romans were coming here for trading reasons long before they invaded. And uh, of course, we cr we base everything from the, the um, is it the birth of Christ or the death of Christ? I don't know. But whenever one of those, we seem to date things from that BC and AD. The Romans got here in 43 AD and stayed for about 300 years. And, oh, it could have been 400 years. And during that time, before that time, before they were here as conquerors, Joseph of Arimathea came over. And it could have been just after Jesus' death for trading reasons. And there were old pathways, and Crook's Peak would have been there, of course. You wouldn't have had a motorway. This could have been boggy and wild all around here. Yeah, I expect more people. We've just seen a lizard cross me then. A little green lizard. Looked like a newt. 
I sometimes like to keep the camera flowing. I'll tell you why, because I that could have been a snake that suddenly went in front of me, you know, it could have been. Out some bay then. That's why it's best to keep away from the bracken this time of year. I haven't always mind when I got lost I go zooming off into it. It's dodgy. Yeah, you've got to be careful not to trip uh, going down because it's very, very, very stony and bumpy. Right, I'm going to turn off for a well, little while now. It's getting less, and less windy this bit, so I've come back on. Here's the gorse. Looking a bit uh, faded, actually, already. S surprising. There used to be other ways up you could do, you know, but you can't, like, up through there. But you can't in the summer when the brambles and everything start going. Oh, you can't really get up there. And I don't know how we ever used to get up there before. There was another way up. We used to go straight up. I don't know where that track is. When I tried to follow it once, it was a dead end. we come to a junction in a minute down here. Which I've also done and followed the other way. I have tried to do different routes. Sometimes they come to dead ends and you end up walking through lots of bracken. But I have done, tried to work them out and videoed. I'm just taking my time because it is... I can't fall and break my wrist again. I've got so much videoing to do though and you know to you know to save and share everything everything I'm I've just done the Ack River Axe one's been shared I'm now working on the hasn't been shared totally I haven't done the web links yet um, then I've got the one I did the other day the uh, Row Barrow and Dolbury Warren one I did, that's got to be, I'm in the middle of doing that one at the moment. Yeah, I'm running out of discs and some of the discs are corrupt and not working properly. Which I found, fortunately I found out by accident when I was going to try and put another one on. I found out that disc was actually corrupt and I wouldn't have been able to have used it. So I, li I like to get my stuff on disc but sometimes it's, at the moment, they're not always saving it. So if I can get it in the cloud as soon as possible, you know, onto my various sites, then at least I know it's been saved. But I have got discs that were good discs from 15 years ago and they're still like new. I do sometimes copy them again just to, but, you know, to get good quality discs, DVDs I'm talking about now. You can't always get them either because people aren't using DVDs so much now. You know, it's all streaming and other ways. So, but I've got a lot of dis and I'm glad I did it, you know, because the stuff I've dug up that could have been lost forever, the stuff I've dug up and used. So this is Sheila wandering down off Crook's Peak, down through the undergrowth. There's a path down there that we can follow. I'm going that way. It's very, very noisy. <laughs> motorway. It ruin in many ways it ruins it. I mean I can just about hear the birds twittering. The road dominates. My knees don't like going downhill all the time, believe it or not. It's just beginning to feel a bit jelly-like. I've done a lot of walking this week. This fortnight. As soon as that sun comes out, I'm out. And this is what happens when you live in a flat. A small flat with no garden. You don't want to sit in a box when, the, when this is like this. I've got, mind you, I've got loads of beach 
a minute from my home, but I'm not a beach person. I'm not a great beach walker either. It's too clean and sterile for me. I like looking for treasure on a beach, a beach combing. But here's a little pretty area to finish this stage of the walk on, isn't it? Some lovely wild garlic and bluebells in the distance. Yeah, I don't know if I recorded the last lot. I was rambling on. Don't ask me what I was talking about. I can't remember. <laughs> don't know if I recorded any of it, to tell the truth. I was rambling on for about a quarter of an hour. Don't know what I was talking about. It might come out, might not. So I'm recording again to see if, just in case. Right, when you get to this point, you can either go up there and come up, come out by the hotel, or you can go down there. What do you fancy doing? Usually you go that way, don't you? It's quicker. Um, I can't decide. We'll go this way for a change, for a change. And he goes up for a little bit. It's just this bit here and then it levels off again. See, once you're out on these walks, say you suddenly get tired or had enough, you can't just think, oh, I'll go down to that village and get a bus. There's no bus services in most places anymore. You know, there's just no buses. And they're trying to cut them all the time. They're trying to isolate people. Some people, at the moment, have got cars, but with the price of everything going up, and then wanting everyone to have electric cars, you just don't know whether they've got plans to isolate us all like they did in the olden days, where you had to get permission from the Lord of the Manor. Yeah, you just want to, don't you? Anyway, I'm walking along this top route. I can normally go down and then come out on a little road and walk. But I thought, no, I don't often do this way anymore. I used to. Um, and we'll go past the great big hotel, Webbington Hotel, it's called. It is famous for celebrities in the past. Um, Jane Mansfield was one of the last appearances she made before she was in a car crash in Somerset and she had her head severed during the crash. Um, she was famous in the 60s. She was like the Marilyn Monroe type pe person. And uh, it was the likes of those sort of people. Lots of famous people played at the Webbington. And it was a nightclub, it was <sighs> those days in the 60s and early 70s where people who used to dress up a lot and go to nightclubs. You know, the blokes would wear suits and ties, and the girls fancy dresses. Not fancy dress, but you know. And um I expect that the, there might still be clubs like that in London, I expect. I went to one once down in Devon when I was about 16. <laughs> Somebody took me along to one. God, I felt like a baby there. I was really sweet 16 with me mini skirt on. <laughs> me Bonnie and Clyde hat and me black leather boots. I remember it very well, actually. Yeah, those early days. 
kind of seems unbelievable now, doesn't it? That we, I don't know, time seems a lifetime away, being 16 now. I've got a granddaughter, I've still got one grandchild who's 16. Um, one was 17 a week ago. I've got one coming up for 27 this year. And um, my eldest grandchild, she will be 27. I've got a daughter who's 50. Um, I mean, look, you know, I mean, I still feel about 30 sometimes. <laughs> now I've got to make my, I've got to get down there somehow. There's a gate. Unless they've blocked it off, of course. You know, people do. If you haven't done something for a while, you find out you can't get there. I know, I just got to get my breath back. I'm going to turn off for a bit, folks. So we're at the back of the Webbington now. And I'm trying to get down to that car park. And there used to be a gate. But I haven't right, done I'm it for a long time. I'm going down to the back of the Webbington Hotel. And there's the gate, look, and I'm going down these steps, sideways. I don't want to trip. <coughs> yeah, so... Yeah, it's different to come down that way, actually rather than the road. It's nice to vary it. And to see if everything's still the same. Tennis court is still there. I don't know if that's still used. I'm going to have a fruit juice now. And a bounty chocolate bar when I get to this gate. Yeah, they have all this for the people that stay in the hotel. They can go for walks around up to the peak. Um, right, we'll just go down there a minute and then I'll... Oh. Right, so let me just turn off then, folks. Let's turn off. That was a short one to add on the onto the last one.